Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of London's Original with Fulham. Still waiting on the episode without the deflected goal. It will happen, I promise. I hope. Please? As always, if you are enjoying my misery, do drop a like on the video. That'd be awesome. Now, over the course of this week, I'm going to have to record a bit more at the front end of the week, which means that these episodes are going to be, I'm going to be getting quite ahead just to finish off the save, sort of. Um, so just bear that in mind with the advice and whatnot. Luckily, with the fact that we're going to carry it on on stream, we can talk about that then and try and figure out what the hell's going on. Anyway, League Cup draw. We're in the next round. This is where we've got to. We've got Brentford away, a West London derby against Brentford, presumably at, yeah, at Griffin Park. Potentially, there's a way of us getting to a quarterfinal here. Um, again, we seem to get some quite toast, tasty draws in the League Cup. Some good ones, too. So, maybe there's a chance of us going through another round. We've already achieved what the board wanted, though. That's the main thing. The other thing to know is that as much as things haven't gone great lately, and I fully agree, and I think I should have switched the defensive against Everton the moment, even when they scored the first goal, I should have just gone and just tried to hold on to it. But at that point, I was like, oh, God. And then when they equalised again, I was like, we have to go and try and win this. And we probably could have on another day. It's just one of those things, unfortunately. But things haven't gone that well, but we are still six points clear of the relegation zone. And the key thing is here, our goal difference is plus two still, uh, thanks to that win against Hull. So a lot better than any of the teams directly below us, which is nice to see. I think we're kind of part of that top group just above it. 14 downwards does seem to be where the problems start to begin. Um, hopefully we won't get dragged into that and a couple of wins in today's episode will help with that. That's the plan anyway. But today we're at home to Manchester City, a team who sit only above us uh, by a single point at the moment and have a pretty good record. Uh, well, no, have a pretty poor record to start the season. They're already eight points off the top of the uh, off the top of the league at the moment, and Newcastle having a great start to the year as well. I still think we're going to struggle, and this is kind of just a free here, but we'll give it our best shot, you know? So, first choice lineup. Um, do we start Bruin Larson or do we start Watmore? I'm tempted to give Duncan Watmore another chance. He played well in the one game he's played. He got a goal and an assist against Everton, so he deserves his chance in the team, frankly. Mitro up top, Vargas, Seri and Kearney, although starting to get a bit worried about Kearney there on the old fitness uh, in terms of his injury risk. But not really many other... Oh, actually, yeah, we could drop Kearney and bring Johansson in. Yeah, that's what we'll do. Uh, Alfie Mawson also struggling. He played a little bit of the, the final part of the game against Bradford. Uh, but I think we kind of need Alfie Mawson. He's been so important with assists and goals this year. Seth keeps his place at left back. Vanyman at right. And Didilon unfortunately can't start. Uh, but ben Why does he not show up? Is Bettinelli set for the under-21s or something? On the bench, Rodak, Adoy, Angisa, Sherla, Reem, Kearney, and Fernandez. Um, it's going to be tough. It's City away. Uh, sorry, City at home. We're always going to struggle, but you never know what we can do. We beat Spurs last year. That was a game that happened. Honestly, if we get hit for less... If we can just keep the goal difference down, I'd be kind of happy. We are, however, going to start the game on defensive because it's City. And turn the league table back on. No matter what we do, I think we're probably going to lose this game. But y you never know. We could play for some corners, maybe have a few chances from there. I, I don't really know. Just try to get away with as much as we can. De Bruyne is going to go to the edge. And Aguero's there. Aguero's there. Oh. It's deflected in. <laughs> yeah, De Bruyne just squares it to the edge. Aguero's there. There's people surging in. And it just deflects off my defender in the back of the net. It's 1-0 City here at... Well, mercifully, we've got to half time, and it is still only 1-0 thanks to that Sergio Aguero go. I'm not going to try and force the issue and try and push it in the second half, because I just think we'll end up conceding 4 or 5 that way. Best thing we can do is just try and keep the score lines down so the player's morale doesn't get too damaged, basically. We're just going to keep going, see what we can come up with in the second half, see if we can find a lucky goal or something, like like they seem to. De Bruyne into the channel for Mendy. Men getting back at least. Sane, uh-oh, cuts inside goal, yeah? Yeah. Uh, he's just able to run straight through the defence and score there. Bit disappointing uh, that we didn't do a little bit better with that, but it is Leroy Sane, I suppose. He does this all the time in real life. I think that's just the way the game represents a player being an incredibly good dribbler when just nobody even bothers to come out and... I think that's just the way it's representing it in the match engine. I don't like it, but it does seem to be that's what's the case because I've, I've seen my players, do, my players do that too. De Bruyne's ball in. Headed away. Otamendi... At least that one's offside. Um, but that deflected in as well. I presume it deflected in off the City player then. Um, that's kind of like the Kearney one where it... Uh, yeah. Ah, uh, Watmore's picked up an injury. And wait, where's Brun Larson? Why does it never let me put Brun Larson on the bench? That's my fault. And maybe Angisa on for... No, we'll bring him on for Johansson. He's more dynamic. I know it's early to make three changes, but we need something. Some extra fresh legs in this game just to try and find some kind of bites to us. But I think we're pretty much dead and buried. If we lost this 2-0, I wouldn't be overly fussed. It's just when it starts to get to the threes and fours that the problems start to emerge, you know? It looks like it is going to be 2-0 to City. It's not the... Oh, God. It's not the end of the world, but... Good Lord, how many blocks do they... That's some great defending from Fulham there, to be fair. The amount of blocks we just made on that one piece of play. 
ah, we didn't offer anything going forward. We tried our best defensively, but Sane cut through us like a knife through butter, and Aguero got that deflected goal. It sucks, but that's just life against Man City, isn't it? Right, so Watford away. We're the first game of the weekend. It gives us a chance to set out our stall if we can go and win at Watford, who are below us in the league, remember, and a win would see them jump above us. So we really do need to try and uh, stop the rot as of late and go and get ourselves something from this game. We were close to doing that against Everton. We threw it away. Today cannot be like that. Going to bring Tom Kearney back in. Uh, Steph Joe needed a rest anyway. Mawson is still a bit lacking in that side of things, but he's so important to the way that we play. So yeah, uh, I think he's did it long back. Yes, he is. Okay, good. So yeah, that's the lineup for today. On the bench, Bettinelli, Adoy, Johansson, Reem, Schurler, Angisa, and not Rui Font. I'm content to keep Duncan Watmore in the side, purely because he played so well against Everton. I want to see how he does against Watford today. If he starts to drop off again, then we might have to have a look at that and bring Brun Larson back in. But he's just performed, you know, he got a goal and an assist in the game. You can't knock that. Right, let's go for this. I really want to see us pull something up here. We're going to stay on balance from the start of this one, though, because it is away from home and just kind of see. They play a similar kind of style to Everton, uh, except their wingers are more withdrawn. Shalabar somehow wins that still. Shalabar. Why? Great strike from Andreas Cornelius and Watford have the lead after seven minutes. It's a wonderful header here. And then it just sort of ends up at the path here. We should there's plenty of times to catch this one out. It's just a brilliant strike from Cornelius. Oh dear. Goalkeeper maybe could have done better, but it's a great strike, and now we have to come from behind. We're gonna have to go positive. In fact, we might even go to attacking. We've got to come up with something in this game. Maybe just positive. I'm I'm tempted to actually try that thing I tried against Bradford where we push the intensity up like that and try to really Harry them off the ball. Staffelidis looking long. Easily mopped up. Oh, for goodness sake. No. Sorry. What was that? Right. We're going to have to have a look at this. The ball's going down the line. Cornelius wins it. And then Mawson comes across. And then... <laughs> Run the segment. I don't even care. What on earth is going on there? was that it's like it's literally going please let Watford have a goal because Mawson doesn't even touch the ball he just leaves it for some reason okay I I have no words to explain what's just happened in that there's, there's no reason why that should happen it's not like it's deflected he should be leaving it for someone else there's no one around he's just left the ball randomly for the Watford player knocked down Deeney remember Deeney's hat trick against us in the very first game of this save Damian ball in Cornelius, and it's 3-0 to Watford. <laughs> well, um, when it isn't going your way, it's not going your way. They've been better than us today. Take nothing away from them, but what on earth is going on in this save again? Cabaselli. I feel like Watford could still be got at, though. That's the... Oh, my God. Why did my goalkeeper just bat the ball correct straight back into the path of the Watford player there? That's a, that's a new one, I must admit. The, the defender somehow wins the ball there. I don't... <laughs> Oh, my Lord. And it deflects off our player into the back of the net. Mm, yeah. I think it's fair to say it's not been an ideal first half. Um, the, the Troy Deeney goal is the one I'm pissed about. These ones, we just were real bad, really. The Troy Deeney one, though, what was that? Anyway, no excuse. We're 4-0 down. <laughs> We've got to keep going, though. I, I can't... If we defend here, we'll just lose more. We have been shocking, though. Mitrovic has been really bad today, actually. I'm going to actually get Fernandez on straight off the bat. And Watmore's not had a good game either. We'll get Sherlock on a couple of early subs just to try and freshen things up and give us some kind of uh, attacking impetus, I guess. Just going to shoot, isn't he? So, oh, he's put it in the back of the net. Right, we've got a goal back from Tom Kearney. Um, <laughs> too little, too late, but it's a goal. Kearney's free kick. And saved, and Sherlock could have put in the rebound there, maybe. Sessegnon, look at the space for Vanyaman on the left for some reason. He's in. Oh, it's... Oh, my goodness. Right, we finally have a deflected goal or a goal like that finally going in our favour. Will Hughes puts an own goal in for us. It's 4-2. It's all still too little too late. This is great work from Vanyaman. I don't know what's going on here. It's so unfortunate from Will Hughes. It really is. Should we go very attacking? It's 4-2. Is there the faintest hope of something ridiculous happening in the final moments of this game? <sighs> what if we just keep hitting long balls? Oh, Deeney's in. It's deflected again. Oh, my God. It's deflected again. It's deflected into the path of Troy Deeney this time for the second time in the day. Will Hughes just gets the ball out on the touchline here, lumps this across the pitch, and the tackle just carries it straight into the path of Troy Deeney for a perfect goal, and it's 5-2 to Watford, and my goodness me, we're back to being shit again. It's 5-2.
and it's all over. Watford 5, Fulham 2. We were dreadful, deserved nothing from the game. But what on earth was that first Troy Deeney goal? That was what really set me off in this one. Um, yeah, bad all round. <laughs> Yeah, things are starting to go from bad to worse again a little bit now. Um, still three points clear of the drop zone, but that could all change. We could be in the drop zone after this. I mean, unlikely. But it's starting to get a little bit desperate again. Despite all that, a lot of players are performing well in training, and it's good because it gives me a chance to talk to them, which is an instant morale boost to them. Like, okay, he's now good. It's important to do this, I think. Okay, so team meeting, and now the squad are fully back on my side, which really should help us going into that Huddersfield game. Honestly, I think that first Troy Deeney goal in the Watford game with the Mawson thing, that just completely tilted me. I think had that not happened, or had the goal been more normal, we'd have probably just dug in a bit rather than just trying to throw everything at them. But that's 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 what happened there, really. So Brighton do finally get their first win and they're off the bottom of the table now. A 3-0 win away at Everton. We are still three points clear of the drop zone, thankfully. Hull City now are bottom with their minus 18. They and Huddersfield look like the whipping boys of the league. However, Southampton were that last year and now they're fourth. So who knows? We've got to beat Huddersfield in this next match, though. It is so important. Dennis had always twisted his ankle three to six weeks. I mean, he's not been playing for us anywhere, but it's still annoying because he's a good backup. Something that has bugged me a little bit is we did that bloody not prepared to work. Why? It's been two weeks now since I've praised his training. Is it just random the amount of times you're allowed to praise them? Because certain players are happy with it now and certain players aren't, even though it's been two weeks. But more important than that is the fact that we held a team meeting to try and improve the morale of the players, and it did. But now we can't now they're all back to where they were again even though we haven't played which is a bit frustrating if you ask me look now suddenly we're back to a poor dressing room atmosphere even though we had the team meeting so why has all their morale disappeared in that time if we haven't done anything so we host huddersfield mm, probably the most important game of the season so far i think because we need this to kick start us like we had a good start things were looking good and it's just kind of gone off the rails again and we do need to get back on the horse today with a victory but every time i say that We'll end up losing 3-0 at home to someone poor. And then a game I'm not expecting to win, we'll go and win 4-1 away at Stoke in our next game or something. That's just how FM seems to be this year. Watmore is not going to start this game. I've decided Brun Larsen is deserving of a place back in the team because Watmore hasn't been fantastic in the last couple of games. Uh, he was good in the one game when he started, but against, yeah, the last few, not so good. On the bench, Bettinelli, Brian, Johansson, Sherlock, Reem, Angisa, and not Rui Font. We've just kind of got to go out there and put something on them in this game and hope that we can come up with something. I want to see a good performance too, not just like a 1-0 scrapes win, although I take that. I want to see us actually play well like we were towards the start of the season. I might also put Suchek back to a defensive role. Someone talked about this and maybe just having him more as more of a screen uh, could make us more defensively stable and just allow him to let Kenny and Seri do that job rather than getting in each other's way. Just an idea. I just want to see something from them today. Anything. We're going to keep it on balance to start with and play it by ear. If we get loads of possession, we'll go to attacking. If we are not, then we'll go to very positive. We'll just see how we go. Field our way into the game. All oh, Brighton, oh, please. I thought we were going to concede another deflection there. Vargas with a bit of pace up to Mitrovic. Play it. Vargas is bombing down the other wing. Mitrovic's ball in. Seri! Oh, what a brilliant counter-attack. Four minutes on the clock and we have the lead at home to Huddersfield. The perfect start to the game. What a breakaway. Mitrovic has got runners beyond. One of them is Another one of them is Seri. And that's a great ball for Brun Larson. Can we catch him again? Ball in. Vargas! Oh, what a chance. That really should have been 2-0 to Fulham there on the breakaway. Right. I think we might switch to um, Cautious, which allows us to be more counter-attacking. God, look how close that was to being over the line. Seri's now injured. What's that? Things are going well for you. Uh, no, 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 no. We've got other ideas. Right. Well, Steph Joe's going to come in. It's a, it's a like-for-like -like sub, but it's annoying because Seri's been excellent so far in this game. Okay, good first half. The possession towards the end of that first half, though, rocketed back towards Huddersfield. And I think that's the absence of Seri in the team. So we might have to switch to Cautious for the second half just to get the win now. Goes for Kearney, of all people. And, oh, great strike from Tom Kearney. Johansson. They've got pretty much every one of our players marked up at the moment. It doesn't matter because Vargas is better than them. Sessegnon. Ball in. Larson. 2-0. We're 2-0 up at home. Jacob Brun Larson with the goal. And it looks like we are going to get a win today, which is very, very timely, I must say. Maybe get Fernandez on for Mitra. I, I like that change. He just offers me something sometimes, I think. I feel like he might do. cessna has been really good too. Well, it certainly looks like we're going to get it. Nothing's really happened for much of this second half. We've just slowly ground the game out. And that's it. Fulham 2, Huddersfield 0. We get the win that we needed against the poor side, I grant you. But it's still the win that we needed. We were very, very good on the night. More play like this in future, eh, guys? Seri's out for three to six weeks. Now, that is bad. That's really bad right about now. Seri missing for three to six weeks is the last thing we kind of needed. Um, Steph Joe's going to be playing a lot more, and it's just coming up to the Christmas period, too, where the rotation is going to be super important. But that win does push us six points clear of the drop zone, 10 points from our first nine games. It's not amazing still, but we're still right within touching distance of even teams like Chelsea in eighth place at the moment. So it's definitely not the end of the world. Uh, we had that poor spell. 
But we seem to be back on the right way now. I think we're looking a little bit more defensively stable. And I think staying up shouldn't be a problem for us. But I really do want to try and push for a top half finish. If we can just get the right combination of things to work for us in the right number of games, I think we should be fine. That's the plan anyway. So... If you have enjoyed this episode, drop a like on the video. I don't know what went on in that Watford game, but I think we've made up for it ourselves against Huddersfield anyway. Then drop a like on the video. That'd be awesome. And if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button for more videos like this every single day. And I'll join you guys in the next episode for, well, what have we got in the next episode? Let's just have a quick gander. We've got Brentford in the cup. We've got Stoke away and then Spurs and Chelsea in the league. So the Stoke away game is our chance. If we win that, we can go into the Spurs and Chelsea games with a little bit more freedom, I'd like to think. Particularly as we beat Spurs last year with this exact system. Anyway, I'll see you guys soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.